Recruiting also is now a thing in the transfer portal that we just have to talk about. And I'm sure you heard Travis Hunter, as expected, has announced he's going to be playing his college football somewhere else. What is the feel you have for him as to where he might end up playing next year? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, obviously I put out an intel piece last night right, right after, you know, the news broke that he was in the portal in that, what, 11.30, 11.45 range Eastern time. Uh, and, you know, based on my intel, you know, he's not a lot to go follow Coach Prime at the University of Colorado. I think obviously, uh, you know, that connection with Dion, you know, is strong. You know, he pulled him from Florida State last year on signing day, one of the biggest shockers ever in recruiting. Uh, but uh, if it's as big of a shocker, I don't know. But right now I'm leaning that he does not end up at Colorado. I've heard, mm. you know, Georgia, Miami, USC uh, are three schools that, that may make a big run at this one late. Uh, or no I guess Florida State in there? Here. Um, yeah, I've heard. I've, I've, I've not heard FSU uh, just yet yeah, about that, him going that, back we'll to Florida. Um, but I have heard Miami, the other uh, Florida school in there, uh, at this point, again, I think it comes down with Travis. Now he had a good year at Jackson state, but now he knows that, look, it's, it's, it's big boy football time. Uh, he wants to get developed as a player and prepared for the NFL draft. I think that's NIL definitely could be a factor and likely will be a factor, but it won't be the factor. I don't think it was this time a year ago, uh, where he went with Jackson state with all the, the accolades, the opportunities to play at Dion and, and under, you know, that, that umbrella for, for Dion. But, uh, to me, I think now it comes down to a serious discussion where he fits, what position, and who can prepare him to get drafted in two years. What are we looking at in terms of a decision timetable for Travis Hunter? You know, I don't think there is one right now. I think, obviously, with the dead period, he can't take visits right now. Uh, you know, I wouldn't surprise me in January to see him get out a couple of places, but I do know he's had some early conversations with schools I mentioned uh, just, you know, in today's time, just today. So, um, you know, keep an eye, I think, right now on, you know, Colorado for sure is one, but mm -hmm. Georgia, Miami, and USC are three I expect to kind of come out of this being at least considered by Travis Hunter. All right, well, we're going to keep following that. Chad, thanks for dropping in on the inside scoop. A couple more days till signing day. Get some rest. Look forward to it. Thanks, guys. See ya. Uh, Travis Hunter hitting the portal. What makes him so valuable? If you're looking at, if you're looking at it like you're a Miami or you're a USC mm -hmm. or you're a Georgia, and you know you're going to have to invest in him through NIL with an opportunity, what does Travis Hunter bring? I think the first thing you look at is the fact that he can help you on both sides of the football. I mean, if he goes to Colorado and ends up following Deion Sanders, you would have to imagine they're going to use him like they used him at Jackson State. And I think it's a very real possibility that if he ends up committing to a Georgia or a Miami, like the conversation will exist. Okay, well, is he a DB for you? Is he a wide receiver? Are there some packages where you have him at wide receiver, start him at DB? So there's so much he brings to you on the field to where you don't just put him in this box of, okay, he's our starting corner and that's it. Like he can return kicks, he can do a lot for you. So the versatility of what he brings on the field, I think is one huge reason why a lot of these programs are gonna mm -hmm. be blowing up his phone here in the very near future, if not already. Yeah, and what he brings off the field, his marketability, his personality. I mean, if he can stay healthy, there's no doubt he can become the face of your franchise, your team, your program, whatever you wanna call it in college football. So. Travis Hunter brings a ton of value to the open market. So we'll see if he truly hits the open market. I, I'm going to find it hard to believe that he doesn't end up at Colorado, but hey, we'll, we'll see. All right, let's pivot now. Let's move on and let's go to national recruiting analyst Sam Spiegelman. Sam, let's stay on the Colorado theme. Four-star athlete Malachi Coleman, previously committed to Nebraska, he visited Colorado over the weekend. What are you hearing coming out of that visit? Yeah, I, th I think this is this is going to be one to watch. But you know, I also won't be ruling out Matt Rule just yet. This um, I know we want to talk about Deion Sanders, and I think that you know we're going to talk about this theme. But Matt Rule is also kind of taking shape at Nebraska at the same time, and um, this is this is so unique that Malachi Coleman, who obviously has been committed to Nebraska. Um, that was a big get earlier for, for Mickey Joseph to, to recruit, now becomes such a, a pivotal figure with the early signing period between Nebraska under a completely new staff. Um, and Matt Rule, who has been, you know, a really impactful recruiter in the state of Texas, now obviously in the Midwest, going against Deion Sanders in his first big time power five role. 
um, just a battle of new coaches and new setups with a traditional power, and now Dion trying to make Colorado a national power. What position do you see Malachi Coleman playing on the next level? Uh, I think most schools view him as a safety. He's big and he's rangy, and I think he brings um, just a, a special level. He's big, but also, you know, he cover a ton of ground. He's so quick. He's so long. Um, just coming from, you know, they don't, there's a, in the Midwest, you know, he, we've been hearing about Malachi Coleman for, for so long. You know, I, I'm out in the South. So when there's a prospect in the Midwest like Malachi Coleman, you hear about him for years. And um, that's a name that I've continued to hear. Coaches in the South that recruit the South talk about him in the Midwest. And um, that's just a game changer with, with unique physical size and speed. Um, at the back end of the secondary. Would be a huge pull for Deion Sanders in his first, well, it's not even his first real recruiting cycle. That'll come in 2024. But Malachi Coleman would be a big pull, along with four-star running back Dylan Edwards, who already committed. What are you expecting from the Buffaloes on signing day? Anything special? Yeah, I think I think we can almost, I don't even think it's it, we have to tease anything. We know that Deion is going to pull you know, the ace out of his sleeve. I think he might have more than one. Um, you know, I know that a couple that are, are certainly in the works after a really pivotal weekend. I think Colorado had one of the bigger um, official visit weekends in the country. I don't think that any of us um, on this show have ever really said that before on a, on a program, um, that Colorado had one of the bigger recruiting weekends before the early signing window. Um, so that, first of all, is, is a statement in itself. But I do think that Dion, as he's known to do at, at Jackson State, and now I think we're going to come to expect that Colorado is going to, we're going to hear a name that, that, you know, a commitment flip, maybe some some uncommitted guys end up going out west to Colorado. I think we can we can almost assure it at this point. JD, it's going to be really interesting to see Dion hit the recruiting trail as a Power Five coach and recruiter. What do you think it would be like to host Dion Sanders on an in-home official visit or in-home visit, and have your mother cook him his food? Yeah, I mean, it's huge. It's huge to have a man with that kind of brand power. Like we talk about all the time with the NIL world, like Dion Sanders is a bigger brand than Colorado yeah. football. And that's not to knock Colorado football. He's a brand in himself. He's a businessman. Like he said, I'm a businessman, yeah. I'm a businessman. Like that's Deion Sanders. And so I think you're going to see that have an impact if he's able to get into the home with a lot of these kids. All right. Thank you for watching. Make sure you smash that subscribe button for me. And remember to check out all the videos on the On3 YouTube page. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.